Hey everyone, I, uh, I just wanted to throw a quick video out there to increase the body of knowledge for um, dealing with a problem that I just had uh, regarding my Bosch uh, 500 series dishwasher. It's probably about six years old. Um, the issue is um, exactly what you can see here, which is there's water in the pan. I'm getting an E15 error and the pump is, uh, the, the drain pump is trying to run and, and dry the machine out. Um, when I looked online at the, sort of the source of the water, um, the first thing they said was you're going to have to diagnose where the, where the source of the water is coming from. And, and this, is the, this is the tricky part with the, with the Bosch dishwasher, is that there's a lot of potential sources. Um, you know, the, the most obvious source and, and the source that I kind of gravitated towards was, was the, the sump pit itself, um, the mixing motor, and, and associated gaskets and lines, as well as the drain pump and the, and the exhaust line. Um, of course, I'd already been able to look and, and determine that, that, that it wasn't an issue with the door leaking and, and, and it leaking back into the pan, so you know, we could kind of uh, strike that out. Um, and, and so, you know, I spent my, a lot of my time looking through all of the gaskets. So um, in terms of um, how I did what I did, it's not that easy because you can't look in from the front of the dishwasher. Um, you may have a limited amount of space and may not be able to see what you're, uh, what you're getting at. So I, I kind of worked through this and it took me a lot longer than I expected and that's why maybe I can kind of give a, give a little jumping off point for, for other folks that when they have to diagnose this. So to look back, um, here's the issue. The water's floating, it's, or the water's causing this little float valve to come, or this little float uh, piece to come up and flip a switch and that switch turns off uh, the water inlet valve and it turns off everything that's going to cause water to come into the dishwasher as well as the dishwasher to drain automatically to protect you from an inundation, which is, which is a good thing. Um, so what I, what I, as I said, I gravitated, my first, my first thought was it has to be in the pit. I'm, you know, I've got a six year old dishwasher. One of these motors has got a bad valve or the lines cracked or something going on. So what I decided to do, and I, and I couldn't tell where it was coming from um, actually, the water itself here kind of looks a little soapy, or it's because a little tinge of yellow to it. And I was, I was like, well, maybe, maybe that is um, um, uh, coming from the sump, and that, that sort of was what was guiding me there originally. Um, right here, what I decided to do was um, uh, fill up the sump pit after the dishwasher had finished. And and for me, what was happening was the dishwasher was going into E15 when the dishwasher wasn't in use in the middle of the night. Um, so I just thought it was just water sitting up against a seal, slowly dripping away uh, somewhere. Um, looking back towards the sump pit on the other side of the dishwasher, um, right here you can see this is my drain valve and here is my associated uh, circulation pump plus um, um, uh, integrated uh, water heater. Um, this is the one that um, I think would have been a fatal blow for us. Uh, there's, it's quite a big job to replace this whole thing and you know, it would have caused me consideration at, at the cost to get this as well as the availability of the part in, uh, in my country. Um, anyway, uh, so leaving, leaving the, uh, the green water, uh, uh, the, the food colored water overnight as well, uh, coming back the next morning, uh, what I ended up seeing was just this same thing again. A little bit of soapy water um, in the base and so you know as I was I was getting really leaning towards the fact that this was a base issue um, and uh, uh, and so the uh, and, and so I, I dried up the area around the motor and I ran the dishwasher um, with it with parts exposed so that I could watch what was going on um, so So this is what I taped midway through the recording, and what I thought I was seeing um, in terms of uh, in terms of the um, in terms of where I thought the water was coming from.
unfortunately, once once I dried the motor off, um, I got in there with some paper towel and very carefully rubbed it away. Um, I didn't I didn't see the the, uh, the drip reforming at the motor anymore, and so I was at a loss until something out of the corner of my eye uh, caught me, and uh, and this is what happened. So as I was watching for the motor auto to come in from the motor, I noticed that there was something that looked like something caught my eye, a little flash. Well, this is the water in the drip. There, did you see that? It just dripped. Unbelievable. I've been chasing over at the motor and the pump, and it's over on this thing which I believe is a check valve is leaking. And it seems to be leaking about once every, I don't know, about 30 seconds I get a drop, which explains why we would be getting water coming in um, at strange times. There it goes again. So it's about once every 30 seconds we're getting a drop. And it's rolling across the back. And then it's coming in, because this pan is a bit of a convex tile pan, it's actually coming in and rolling in underneath the motor. So that's why that part, even though I thought I saw it there, was staying dry. Unbelievable. And you, and you can see that, that just just back in my video, just a little bit there, if I can bring it up. Um, even though I thought I saw it there. Oops. There, was staying dry. You can see. Unbelievable. You can see that the uh, the padding. Uh, or the, the sound dampening material was actually wet. So the water was running through, being wicked up into the padding, and it was moving around underneath the motor um, and making it appear as if the motor had been leaking. And uh, just wanted to make you aware of that. Um, I think that, you know, don't, don't put all your attention on the sump pit. Just, just watch uh, your water in that uh, valve there um, and, and make sure that, that it's maybe not cracked or leaking the way that mine was because this per the, the the cost of a, a new water inlet valve is, is nominal. It's, it's a no-brainer to, to fix and you're back on your way. So uh, that's that's what I intend to do and uh, I hope this uh, may, maybe helps you. Thank you.